Hello, hello. I'm Marina. You know that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants. And welcome to Millennial Plant Chair. Welcome, welcome to my first official houseplant tour of the year of 2022. Still trying to get used to saying that. <laughs> I usually like to do houseplant tours two times a year in the spring and fall time just to see how far my collection has gone and grown since the previous growing season, especially like that spring to fall time. My plants do so much growing and it's just so awesome to see. So if long houseplant tours and beautiful plants is something you're into, Grab a snack, grab a drink, a coffee, a tea, a water, a white claw, <laughs> and let's look at some really beautiful plants. Real quick before we start, if you haven't already, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You're watching a houseplant tour video, which means I know you like plants. And like I said, on this channel, we talk about all the houseplant things, and I would love to have you in my plant community. All right, so now on to the plants. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and start in my plant room. This is where I do all of my filming and repotting and everything, but it's also a guest room. Uh, this was supposed to be a guest room originally, but we didn't wanna do that. I just decided I took it upon myself to make it into a plant room. And here's my grow tent. I'm trying to like convince my husband to see if we could just get rid of the bed completely and turn this into a reptile plant room for my spider and bearded dragon and whatever else we wanna get in the future. But um, I'm still in the process of talking him into it. <laughs> my grow tent, my cat, I should also call this my cat room because she's always in here. She just loves the warmth. Her name is Lokita. <laughs> oh, she's not in the mood to get touched. This plant room is a work in progress. It's always changing, but I'm really liking the way it's coming out. I have some artwork that I traded and or like hired somebody to make or wanted to give away or somebody has made for me in a plant trade. This is one of my favorites. It's a philodendron pink princess leaf. My light, my sand sea light? No, I forgot what, my na what the name of this light is, but I just have it off right now because um, it's just really yellow and it's not a very nice color to look at. And um, everything, all of my lights and timers are hooked up to, um, like a Bluetooth sort of plug. It's really cool. You can control it on an app and they're on for, I think, 14 hours a day. So I don't even have to think about it. They just come on and off by themselves. I'll have that link down below if you want to check that out. So we're gonna start off with my Monstera Deliciosa. She's so cute. This was my third one. I used to have four of them and I had to get rid of them because I just didn't have the space for all of them. So I have her now and I just think she's just so freaking cute. I can't wait to throw her outside in the summertime and see how much she grows. We have a little Haworthia baby there. There's some diatomaceous earth, by the way. I went through a bad thrip outbreak this spring. Um, it happens every spring, and so that's been a lot of fun, but we are thrip free, and um, yeah. <laughs> Here I have my Scandapsis argyreus. My, uh, I'm gonna blank on so many plant names. My Scandapsis argyreus, super cute. A whale fin. Sansevieria slash Dracaena that never grows for me. <laughs> One of my favorite philodendron jungle boogie. I think this plant is just really pretty. A jade plant that's actually <laughs> I have to bring to my job. I just love her so much. I don't want to bring her back. This Dracaena, I always forget the name of it. I think it's a white jewel or something like that. This one is super cute too. I uh, I'm obsessed with her. Uh, some Spanish moss that I think is on the brink of dying. This is my silver band, Maranta. And then over here, I just recently set up to be like a little philodendron moment. <laughs> uh, they're super cute. The one thing I don't like about the plant room is all the cords. I have to figure out cord management, but that's for another day. Here we have my beautiful philodendron Mexicanum and my philodendron Florida Ghost. That's the newest leaf, so freaking pretty. Philodendron Black Cardinal, 
she didn't really do that well this winter when I brought her in, but it's fine. <laughs> and philodendron pedatum, philodendron pedatum, super freaking cute. And philodendron peltatum, such an under, underrated philodendron. Look at that. It's almost giving off like philodendron mame vibes or silver cloud so pretty and then i have a bentel sensation and up here one of my pride and joys my philodendron el chaco red look at that new leaf coming in oh it's so pretty and so burgundy oh perfection i just i love this plant so much and over here is philodendron bernardo potsii i think how it's pronounced starting uh, trying to get it to climb so we can get more mature leaves but super cute philodendron here i have my medium i think this is just a regular medium and then back here is one of my absolute favorites is just a regular syngonium but i just love how big the leaves are it's so pretty here is a sandy light i got it's a little clamp for only $17, so I'm trying it out. And so far it seems to be doing really well. This area was like a particularly low light area, so I think everything should be happy. Down here I have my Schifflera and then my Monstera Peru. Also, all these chalices you'll see, I will have in the link in my description box, just cause I get a lot of questions of people asking about them. Uh, here is my Golden Pothos, which honestly made me a Pothos fan because before, I prefer Hartley Philodendron over Pothos, but I don't know, man. Pothos are just extra special. My beautiful Anthurium Crystallinum that just put off its newest, most beautifulest leaf. I'm obsessed with her. And back here is my, let's see if I can remember how to pronounce the name. The Matophyllum by Panetophytum Photum, something like that. <laughs> um, AKA Philodendron Hope or Solemn, but they're not Philodendron. Anyways, um, <laughs> here is my Anthurium Villanorum, and it's kind of been on the struggle bus. I just saved it from root rot, which is new for me. I usually don't rot Anthuriums. Here I have one of my baby King Anthurium pups that my big one put off. Um, philodendron melanochrysum. Oh, I love this plant. This is um, some thrip damage that you see there, unfortunately, but she's thrip free. And then there's the newest leaf. So it's not as big as this one, but it did go through thrip, so it looks beautiful. My philodendron campos portuanum that one day I will put on a moss pole and try to get to climb because this is treated wood and it won't climb on that treated wood. Here is my beautiful Anthurium Magnificum and she is currently blooming. I'm now entering the world of Anthurium pollination. I am gonna try to cross pollinate this, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> and my Philodendron Varicosum is finally making a comeback after I broke it. Look at those hairy leaves. And I had to repropagate all of it. Fun times. <laughs> I have a Nepenthes. I think this is just a regular Nepenthes Miranda type. No pictures yet on her, but I'm just recently putting her in high humidity. So hopefully now we get some pictures. And here we have my Philodendron Adabapoensi. Look at those beautiful backs. And it does have a little bit of new growth right there. Super excited about that. One of my Philodendron Mayoi. Super cute. And then behind here, I have everything just stacked up. Here is my Anthurium Forgetii. And that new little leaf. Oh, you so cute. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about these plants behind here. Uh, Philodendron Burly Marks Variegated, which is just does not want to pop a new leaf for me. The bigger one that I had grew fine, but this one just does not want to out come out with that second leaf no matter what I do. Here we have my uh, Anthurium vitarifolium, uh, Anthurium vitarifolium, which struggled first sec, but now it is doing amazing and putting off the cutest little leaves. And down here is my Anthurium radigans hybrid. Um, so it's like the 
luxurians radicans mix something like that um and my queen anthurium anthurium moraquianum as you can see i just i did this leaf so dirty oh i burnt her but look little dead leaf asmr for you <laughs> uh there's her other leaf so that one was super pretty i always mess up the tips but right now she's just two leaves and I'm just patiently, impatiently waiting for that new leaf to come out. And hopefully I can do better. <laughs> and here's my Anthurium vitarfolium. Actually, I've, I don't know if I got that right. So that one is my Palladiflorum, the little one. And this is my vitarfolium. Look at that new little leaf. So cute. I love these pendant Anthuriums. And back here on that plank is Epipremnum panatum variegata. Super slow grower, but <laughs> hopefully I'll get a new leaf soon. And then we go up here. It's just a Pothos Enjoy and, or Pearls and Jade. I don't know. I always get those two confused. And this little cute hoop that I just love because Hoyas are my life. I love Hoyas so much, even though you haven't seen a Hoya yet. And then here I have a philodendron and another syndapsis and that philodendron heart leaf is just trailing up the wall. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like keep it going or if I should bring it around. I'm still deciding about that, so I don't know. And uh, somehow the only air plant that I've been able to keep alive. And I think it's just because Yoda is holding him. So thanks for that, good looks. All right, now we move over to this hot mess of a shelf. This, this, I just, I don't know what to do with this shelf because I love this area. I love all the wood, but I hear I have propagations and some rehab plants because I'm able to control the humidity in this room versus downstairs in my living room where I have a lot more of my plants. And so I have to put a lot of rehabs in here and there's just, I don't know. So, <laughs> this hot mess of a shelf. I have my philodendron Brazil, super cute. Over here, I just have some cuttings that I think I'm gonna leave there for forever, like a Cebu Blue, philodendron Brazil, lemon lime Maranta, Pilea pepperamoides, lots of stuff. We'll see what happens there. Here I have another Anthurium crystallinum that's about to put out a new leaf, and then a philodendron Billetier. This is a Hoya Carnosa, which is the only Hoya that I've seemed to struggle with so far, but I have faith it'll do something soon. <laughs> um, over here is my Hoya Macrophylla that just is a beast. I can't wait to move her outside. And then here, it doesn't look like much, but this is an Alocasia Silver Dragon. <laughs> I absolutely hate alocasias. I can't deal with this whole dormancy thing that they go through, so I'm currently um, gonna give that away or sell it or something. Over here is my beautiful Hoya Obovada Virgata Splash. Super cute. Um, is rebounding from being cut so much. I do a lot of trades, and sometimes I cut plants too much, and they suffer for a little bit, but it's fine. <laughs> Here is a, oh, I think this is a philodendron giganteum, I want to say. It's a little babe. I just got it, but doing great. My Numelower, my Dyskidia Numelaria, or the Dragon Jade. Another variegated Obovata Splash. Another Billy. Uh, this is a Syngonium Green Splash. Getting a lot of light. Super cool variegation it's putting out though. Here is a baby Raphidophora decursiva and a philodendron splendid that this is also some thrip damage, but this new leaf is looking beautiful and has a new leaf coming out. So I lied. This is the Syngonium Three Kings and this is my Syngonium Green Splash looking super cute. Here is a philodendron heart leaf variegated such a tiny little leaf i love it so much and my hoya megalaster once again another plant that suffered from being cut it's super sun stressed but it's putting out some new little growth and then this is hoya vitilinoides which is actually one of my 
favorite Hoya. I love that so much. And then here we have my Syngonium Red Arrow or the Yano Carti, I think it's called. I don't know, something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know about this Syngonium. It's been hard for me. <laughs> and up here, I just have a bunch of propagation, mostly Hoya. This is Silver Glory String of Hearts. This is a little Rib Salas baby that sprouted in one of my other string of hearts and I finally separated them but that's super cute and perlite propagation is my favorite if you didn't know I'll leave a whole playlist linked down in the description box if you want to learn more about perlite or just hear my tips and whatnot so now here is also another type of perlite prop bin but I also use it to rehab plants if they need some high humidity and there I have like a Viricosum, a Finlaysoniae, a Variegated Hoya Compacta, a Hoya Bella, Hoya Cariae, my little potato plant, my Urania uh, Erecta, Stefania Erecta. And that one right there is a Philodendron Atom, which is a really cool Philodendron. So lots of different stuff. And then I have some props here, Silver Sword, Philodendron pedatum, I have a Discidia ovata, and then an avocado seed that I think is rotting. I don't know, I'm experimenting. Just don't ask. Now coming over here, we have a Philodendron Dark Lord. Anthurium, this is my first Anthurium to ever pollinate. It gave me berries one day, it self-pollinated itself. So that's when I started to deep dive into Anthurium pollination. And as you can see, it's flowering. There's two inflorescences here. So it's so crazy. Apparently this Anthurium likes to just pollinate really young. And <laughs> that explains why this one decided to give me berries one day. Over here I have just a whole bunch of Dark Lord propagations. This is one of my newest plants, my Philodendron Majestic. I got this one in a trade. I'm excited to see this grow. My beautiful Anthurium, Anthurium. <laughs> my beautiful Hoya Obovada. Look at that big leaf. This thing started putting off the biggest leaves when I had it outside this past summer, so I'm excited to bring it back out. I have my Ficus Burgundy my Syngonium Albo, my <laughs> Monstera Albo, Monstera Deliciosa, variegated, super pretty leaves. This one used to be a lot bigger, but I've cut it so many times to prop and give away. <laughs> and then here, I just added this shelf, but I just have a random assortment of funky boys, an orchid cactus, an elephant bush, an old man cactus, that's the real name of it. And down there I have a bear paw, another really cute funky looking cactus, and a white ghost euphorbia that kind of looks thirsty. <laughs> Here I have my Alocasia Friday. Once again, dropped its leaf over Alocasias. My Philodendron Gloriosum that also suffered from thrips, so it's well, down to one leaf, but it's putting out a new leaf, so she's doing amazing. And this is Ficus umbellata, <laughs> also a thrip survivor, as you can tell with the diatomaceous earth and the one leaf, but that new growth is growing, so hopefully she'll come back great. Pretty sure this one was patient zero. And here is my Aplissima. Honestly, I always forget the name of that plant. I'm so sorry, plant, but she's amazing and grows so well. And then on here, we have my Skeleton Key. I actually don't know the scientific name of this plant, which I should know, but I'm trying to grow it on this plank to get some nice big leaves because as you can see, <laughs> it doesn't look like much at the moment. So somehow we knocked all of that out. <laughs> All of these plants here, I can't believe that. Now we are going to go here. Oh, but first, I forgot to share. These are some elephant ear bulbs that I got from my mom's garden, and I've been waiting. It's been about two weeks because uh, I haven't been to her house, and I'm waiting to go and bring them to her. But look, they're finally like sprouting all on their own. How crazy is that? Both of them are starting to grow roots, and I just don't understand because they're just sitting here 
on a mattress, not a comfortable one, might, might I add. And the only light they get is whatever light comes in through this window. So that's super crazy. Uh, but I know I'm trying to bring them to her soon so we could plant up. Now to go into my grow tent that my dear cat, as you can see, scratched up. But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, Vivo Sun grow tent. And honestly, it's been amazing. As you can see, it's really small. I'm about 5'3", and it comes up to just below my hip. Uh, so it's really ideal for small spaces, and I have so many Hoya in here. And look at this David Kamingii. It's about to bloom. I was really hoping the blooms would be open by now, uh, but it's so close. Those blooms are so pretty, and I can't wait for them to come back. Here I have Hoya Jennifer. I'm not gonna name everything in here just because there's a lot, but I'll highlight some. Here's my Dionyu dual egg. That looks like a little egg, but that's the seed. And this thing has taken at least eight months to grow that one leaf. And that one leaf is taking forever to open up, but I can't wait to see it grow. Here's a new Hoya that I have. It's Hoya fungi. And it took really well to my tent, and I can't wait to see it grow more. Hoya Marillii, such a favorite. And then that tendril there is Hoya Fitchii. And look at how beautiful she is. And Hoya Rotundiflora. These two Hoyas uh, significantly stunted their growth after being cut a few times. So I threw them in the grow tent and off they went. Over here is Hoya Svetlana that I just recently put in here. I'm really hoping I'll get some more leaf growth out of her, but she is just such a beautiful plant. I love this Hoya so much. And then that pink sun stressed one is Hoya elliptica. I had to move this one away from the light uh, because as you can see, it was significantly sun stressed. I'm a little bit worried about it, but hopefully it'll be okay. <laughs> uh, here is a philodendron splendid cutting. Little Hoya rosita that just put off that new little tendril. Hoya polynura doing really well finally. I've struggled with this Hoya for a while, but it's finally doing something. Hoya Sarawak is actually one of my top favorite Hoyas. And look at that beautiful sun stressed leaf. Oh, she's absolutely amazing. And this is actually a new Hoya of mine. This is Hoya I Senses. And I really love that dark edging to it. Oh, it's so pretty. I just propagated it in perlite and uh, I potted it up yesterday, I think, or two days ago. So can't wait to watch her grow. She seems like she'll be a really easy grower. And then in here, actually, I have my two little anthurium seedlings left from that anthurium gracil, gracil I showed you earlier. They each have two leaves. And they're doing amazing. I had six of them and I gave away all of them so far except for those two. And I'm just going to hold on to them for a while and see how long they take to mature a little bit more. But that is everything in here. Some Hoya I will eventually take out and bring them outside or just acclimate them to my regular household. Now we go down to my living room and Honestly, I kind of, I go through it with my living room. I have really high ceilings, so keeping the humidity controlled in this area is near impossible. So that's why I have so many plants upstairs in my plant room now. But I used to have all of my plants on these two grow racks, especially when I lived in my previous house, and they all just did so amazing. But here we are now, they do look a lot emptier and it's kind of sad, but I just, I had to move everything out. And I also have three kids, so that being down here with them, this is where they spend a lot of their time. And, and it's just not good to have a lot of plants around them. And then I also get no sunlight. So this is not the ideal place for plants, but <laughs> here we are. Lots of grow light action happening here. And this is still in the process of being kind of decorated. I don't know, I really wanna put some sort of something here. But down below, both of them are empty. This one I'm probably going to use to house my kids' toys, put some like cute little baskets so that they can have their toys here. But yeah, let's get on to the plants. Here is my Scandepsis exotica, one of my absolute favorite plants. I love her a lot. Here I have a Hoya australis. 
that just, I don't know, does not like me. And then Hoya Sunrise that has just gone absolutely crazy. I'm sorry for the purplish lightings. Unfortunately, that's just the hue my grow lights give off, even though they're supposed to be just pure white. Here is my Hoya Compacta that's finally putting off new growth. Me and Compactas really just don't get along also, but uh, I love them so much. I think they're so cute. And this is just a Cebu Blue cutting I potted up. <laughs> Hoya Treubiana also is just doing all right. Um, has this long tendril. It just put this one out. I'm not sure what that's going to be. Um... We'll, we'll see, a new vine perhaps. Here is one of my funky boys. I forgot what type of epiphytic cactus it is, but it's super cute and I love all the aerial roots. It's just so crazy looking. My black pagoda lipstick plant. And this is a Hoya I actually don't, I forgot the name of. I lost the tag a while ago and I don't remember what it is. Uh, but one day I will find out. Or perhaps, if you know, let me know in the comments. And here, I really just like the way I set up this with all the different trellises. Once again, this is from a company called Tray Leaf. The link will be down in my description box. But I just love the way that they're just all set up. Just with the different trellises and styles. And yeah. Okay, so this is my Hoya Cax Burgii. Which is a really cute Hoya. I think this one is just so underrated. We have a Hoya variegated Wayetii, super cute. My Mandula Pothos, uh, Hoya Calistophylla that is a prolific bloomer. I know it looks weird, but you can just see how many times it bloomed. And it's finally giving me a new leaf. Definitely one of my slowest growing Hoya. Back there is Hoya Ilgorium. I think that's how you pronounce it, probably not. Here I have some sort of Ripsalis that I just love a lot and it's in the cutest little robot planter. Here is Hoya Mathild. Not the splashiest, but still cute. And look at those cute little leaves. And she's put off lots of peduncles, but none of the peduncles have bloomed for me and it's really sad and kind of insulting. Over there is Hoya Pubicalix. And then a beautifully sun-stressed Hoya Obscura. This one blooms all the time for me as well. Look at how cute that is. And I really like these trellises. This is an Arca trellis. I'll have that in the description box below. It's acrylic and it's super cute. I just like the way they look with the Hoya. And I love this Hoya Coron Coronaria. It's a super fuzzy Hoya and you can just hear it. it feels like velvet it's so cute and then it has this little heart trellis and i just think it's really cute how it's filling out and then we have hoya dakii one of my favorite hoyas this one recently just got a chop so hopefully i will get a new tendril from it because that would be really fun but look at how cute that is oh i love hoya dakii and then hoya rotusa that absolutely hates me and refuses to grow we go up to the third shelf and i just switched this out now i have this as my permanent propping slash seed germinating i planted a whole bunch of seeds with my kids so i have like lavender and sunflower and something else in here that we planted but i also have propagations i have a variegated heart leaf propping in there and a couple hoya nodes here i have more hoya retusa because my other one just hated me and then in here i have a whole bunch of silver swords propping and other stuff like that moonlight uh skindapsis moonlight i actually have um a lot of nodes in there wet sticks and then back there is my philodendron varicosum two of them and this beautiful philodendron lemon lime it's actually one of my top favorite philodendrons and then just a couple of serpegias i think it's a string of daggers and then maybe a regular string of hearts. I don't remember. And, oh, and then my little variegated string of pearls, which is just doing amazing. I don't know how I've killed four regular string of pearls, but this variegated one is just living its best life. I really think it's because little Bruno here just takes really good care of them. Good job. <laughs>
<laughs> and now we go over to this shelf that probably looks the saddest to me because it just looks so bare. I need to, oh, this is my excuse to go buy more plants, you know? <laughs> so up here I have my string of hearts. I know it doesn't look like anything at the moment, but that's because I completely chopped it up. I replanted a whole bunch of strings in there i just kind of circled them to try to get more growth and full, fuller vines but she trailed all the way down to the bottom of the floor or touching the floor and yeah i'm excited to see all her new growth i did the same with my variegated string of heart i started them over put them in a bigger pot i wish i could show the lighting better but they're super cute and then over here is my silver glory string of hearts and they're doing really well. Here is one of my favorite plants, my pickle plant. I just love my little funky looking plants. They're just so cool. Up here is a euphorbia I always forget the name of. Look at how pretty she is. I call her my little barbed wire fence because that's what she looks like. There's still some like cotton on her from when I unpacked her, but oh, I love this. I love her so much. I kind of have all of my cacti type plants up here. Back there is just some bunny ear cactus or some Apuntia, not bunny ears. And they've just been living in this glass jar thing I made. And I'm trying to up the watering a little bit because that's making the pads open up more. They were definitely really dehydrated before that. And here is some dead stick plant. I don't know the scientific name, but look at how freaking cool that is. I just got these and they're currently propagating. Oh, and here is some little astrophytum seeds I propagated or I planted, I should say, and only three made it, <laughs> but that's fine. They're so freaking cute. They take forever to grow though. Holy crap. And then back here, my little butt rocks, lithops. One of them is currently splitting. I honestly don't know. Oh, oh no. I'm sorry, dead sticks. Don't actually become dead sticks. I don't know how my lithops are still alive, to be honest, just because I am a chronic overwaterer. Here is my little astrophytum buddy that has a baby, but I don't, I don't know how this whole astrophytum baby thing works. Like, how long are you gonna take to get longer? I don't know. Over here, we have a monkey tail that's so little cute and so fuzzy. And then just some random succulents. I think that's like a variegated sedum. Oh, I forgot this name, but this one is actually super cute. And then a fire aloe, I think that one is called. Super cute. And then here is a lipstick plant that I started as like one little upside down cutting. And now it's all this. It's so crazy to think about. It did try to flower, but the flower didn't really make it. And that looks quite phallic. <laughs> Back there, I have a little terrarium I started with my kiddos. There's two jewel orchids in there and a peperomia leaf. And then this is a aloe. I don't know what kind, or maybe it's a Haworthia, um, that is somehow still alive and growing. <laughs> Coming down here, Neon pothos. This philodendron sub being seen some. <laughs> I never know how to pronounce it, but it is such a cute philodendron. I can't wait to see it grow and mature more. The leaf is getting so big so fast. Such an underrated one. I've never even heard of that Hoya. That Hoya, that philodendron before I got this in a trade. <laughs> this is another Raphidophora decursiva putting out that new growth. Over here is Raphidophora tetrasperma. Um, funny story, I had a big one. I sold it because I was tired of it. And then a couple months later, my sister-in-law got this one and I stole a cutting from her. So since then it's grown and I chopped it and now it's growing again. And then over there is philodendron burly marks. I got rid of my big one and I got this small little cutting and like it's variegated brother upstairs, it is just not living its best life. Here we have one of two philodendron pink princesses. There's the second one. Not really that variegated, but it's okay. We're working on it. One day, maybe she'll get more variegated. <laughs> um, putting out a new leaf, doing the philodendron shoe thing. And then here we have my only begonia, which is the tiger eye, I believe. 
Now, going down here, we're back to some normal coloring and not so purple. We have my Dyson Bakia reflector that I love. This is, look at how vibrant that line is. As you can see, they come in really vibrant and then over time they get kind of dull, but they're still so beautiful. I love them. Dyson Bakia was one of my first plants, so they have a special place in my heart. Here's my Philodendron Postazonum. If you know, she used to be big and beautiful, got too big, so I had to cut her back. These are her leaves now. So cute. Philodendron Squamiferum. Look at that fuzzy petiole and that new leaf. Anthurium Doriaki. She got some fungus on her this past winter, so she's only down to three leaves, but we have all of that stem to work with, so I think I'm going to propagate her. I don't know. Stay tuned. It's going to happen. I just don't know when. <laughs> Here's my Anthurium 